everyone! Today we're going to be going over a better method for projectiles. Most people will either use an impact sensor or a trigger zone to destroy the projectile once it hits something. This can lead to either projectiles bouncing off and then destroying themselves, or going through the object and deleting themselves. It's something that can break the immersion of the player, as seeing a projectile pass through something or bounce off isn't really something that would ever happen. Meteor Molecule actually have made a projectile that fixes these problems, but it's not on the Dreamiverse on its own, you can only get it in the FPS character. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to build this, as well as add some of my own improvements to it. First off, go ahead and grab a projectile model from the Dreamiverse, then place down a microchip, and group it to the bullet. By group, I don't mean snap to surface, but actually grouping. Then open the properties of the microchip, and scope out of the new group, and connect the affected objects input to the group. Now, to get started with the logic, we are going to be needing a few things. A movement sensor, a couple of calculators, and a ray scope. Before we do anything, let me explain what we are doing. We are basically detecting if we hit something one frame in advance of doing so, and in order to do this, we need to know how fast we are going. Then we need to do some conversion, so we need to divide our speed by the physics frame rate, which is 30 frames. Then we want to set up our ray scope to detect something exactly a frame ahead of our position. So set the length of the ray scope to 0.5 and have it face the direction of the projectile and put it back far enough so the front of the arrow is exactly at the tip of your projectile. You also want to turn off the missile label and set the label of the group to be missile. This way we don't hit ourselves. Go ahead and reset the length to 1 and plug in the second calculator output into the length and set the input mode to multiply. When we are not moving, we still want the ability to detect collision, so using the second calculator, we will add 0.5 and use the output of the first calculator to add to. Now if you were to fire the projectile, it would detect collision properly. We could just hook up a destroyer here, but first we want to actually be able to damage whatever it is shot at. The way the medium molecule projectile works is it spawns an impact effect with a health modifier on it, so we will do the same. Go ahead and make your own impact FX or find one from the Dreamiverse. Keep in mind though, in order for it to show up properly later on, you want the splash to go upwards or else it will be rotated incorrectly. Place a microchip in the FX with the same method we did with the projectile. In here, we are going to need a timer, a knock gate, a health modifier, a switch, and a keyframe. The switch is to change whether we damage friends or foes, so name it accordingly. The timer is to just turn off the health modifier after 0.1 seconds. Use the finished output of the timer to plug into the knock gate and the knock gate into the health modifier. For the health modifier, set it to use zone instead of impact and format the zone sizes to the size of the impact. Then on the labels page, set it to damage friends and targets. Make sure to select the AND and not ANY on the label page. Using the keyframe, turn off the friends label and turn on the fill label in the health modifier. Then connect the switch to the keyframe. You may also want to use a different timer and destroyer to destroy the impact, or you can tweak the lifetime settings of the emitter when we emit it. Next, make a copy of the group, scope in and flip the friendly switch. Now we have impacts for hitting friends or foes. Heading back over to the projectile logic, we need to differentiate between if we are hitting a friend, foe, or anything else in the scene. Go ahead and copy the ray scope twice, and make sure to plug back in the length inputs for the new copies. Then in the first ray scope, turn off the friend, foe, and target labels as we manage that with our two new ray scopes. On the labels page of the second ray scope, set the labels to friend and target, and set the mode to and. For the third ray scope, do the same but with foe instead of friend. Go ahead and grab a switch and a knock gate, plug the switch into the knock gate and the ray scopes with the foe and target label selected. Then plug the knock gate into the other ray scope. 
Go ahead and place down three emitters and a combiner. We are going to use the combiner to tell the emitter exactly where we hit so we can emit our impact effect there. To do this, set the combiner to transform mode. It's a little cube with an arrow on it. Then use the position and orientation outputs of the ray scopes for the position and rotation input of the combiner. On the second page of the emitters, plug the combiner into the scene space transform input. Then for all the emitters, set the speed to zero meters a second, the mode to emit once, then time to emit zero, and then select the respective impact effect. You can also set the emit lifetime here. Then use the hit something output of the ray scopes and plug them into the respective impact effect emitter. Place a destroyer and use the hit outputs to trigger this as well. And there you have it, an advanced projectile that looks and plays great. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you all for watching and have a great day. But first, I want to thank my patrons. Christian Sanchez. Derry Skolassen, Dylan Woodbury, Empty Chest, Mythic Marty, Patrick Keller, William Snyder. Alright, thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone.